Good morning. It's um, it's the last weekend in August, bank holiday weekend. September awaits, and here we still are. I was chatting to Brian earlier on, and it's, we think it's um, 24 weeks. So that's six months that we've been recording our videos on a Sunday. Well, we hope in the next few weeks actually to start doing some live Sunday morning services. We've been doing that on a, a Wednesday night and it's been really good. Um, so I want to maybe try doing that. Uh, we're just trying to get all the technology together and all the equipment that we need. So watch this space and I've been announcing, um, well, you know, John will be announcing via email and I'll be saying on here exactly when we're going to do that, but it'd be good. Um, so I broadcast live from Bethel at least, We're gradually moving ourselves towards that day when we can be together. Because I don't know about you, I'm longing to be together as a fellowship, um, just seeing one another again. So please pray for that. Um, please pray that we'll get all the technology sorted and that we can start that as soon as possible. But it, what it will mean <laughs> is that you can tune in. At 10.45, we'll keep the time the same, 10.45 on a Sunday morning. So that's one coming soon, so watch this space. Just at the start, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, the Sunday school teachers, the whole team there, the, the BB team, the GB team, all those involved in, in the youth work um, that has been continuing in, on in the six months that we've been in lockdown and it's been a real blessing to so many people so if you're involved in that team thank you many of you have gone for six months without a break in in doing this and i know you know in speaking to families they've been really blessed by the work that you've been doing so keep it up hopefully <laughs> hopefully it won't be another six months but um, the first six months has been fantastic so thank you thank you Thank you very much for all that you've you've done. The schools start this week. Kids, if you're watching this, I bet you're looking forward to that, aren't you? It's going to be a little bit different for you. And certainly if you're a teacher, it's going to be very different for you, isn't it? Um, Josh has produced a little video, which we're going to show in a minute, about the work that we're going to be doing in the schools. So we'll show that in a minute. And uh, we have another teacher who's going back to school, um, but she's going back to school all the way in Birmingham. Sadly, we're going to be losing Jasper and Hannah. Um, they both got jobs over in Birmingham, and uh, we wish them all of the best. We, we're praying for them, and um, Brian has done a little interview with them, which we're going to play in, in a moment. So Jasper and Hannah... And Josh. So we'll tell you what, we'll play those videos now and then, then I'll pray before we get into the Word of God. So let's play the videos. Hi everybody and welcome to our church service this morning. My name is Josh and if it's your first time visiting us today, I want to extend a special welcome to you. But to everybody taking part in our service this morning, watching at home or wherever you are, welcome to Bethel Church. It is great to have you with us, although not physically but um, remotely and through the wonders of technology. And we pray that God will really bless us all this morning as Pastor Rob brings God's word to us. Before he does, I've been asked to give a, a couple of quick updates on some of the school's work and to encourage you to join with us and support us in prayer. So the first thing is that for many of our children and young people, this coming week will be the first time that they've stepped back into school in five months. That will obviously bring a lot of nervousness and maybe a little bit of fear as well as excitement. I just want to encourage you to pray for, for peace across all of the pupils and young people as they start back this week. Please also pray for the staff as well. There, there's so many people that work in schools as deputy heads, head teachers, teachers, learning support assistants, caretakers, lunchtime supervisors, after school workers, social workers, whoever it may be. Please pray for them as they go back into schools. For some staff, this will be the first time that they've been exposed to, to other people from outside of their families. And for, for all staff, this will be the first time that they've been exposed to such a large number of people. 
So please pray for safety. It is crucial that we continue to petition God and ask him for safety amongst our teaching staff. Education is such a privilege and it is something that not everybody across this world has access to. We must continually thank God for the gifts that he's given us here in Liverpool. Please also pray for those who are starting uh, new schools. So that might be the, our really young ones who are starting primary school for the first time or those going into junior schools. We have a number, particularly of girls, who are starting high schools from our YPF Hub and Girls Brigade and uh, they're starting high schools for the first time so please pray for them this week and please also pray for those who've received their GCSE results and we've got a number of them within our church they've all done really well so thank God for the gifts that he's bestowed on them and also the grades that he's given them as he's directing their paths and please pray for them as they start colleges and sixth forms and also pray for, there's a, a small number of girls who've received their A-level results and they're heading off to different universities. So please pray for them as well. That's just within our church, but of course we've got our whole city to pray for as well. Can I encourage you as well to particularly pray for two main issues. The first one is Lister Junior School. They've invited us to do video assemblies for them, one a week um, for the foreseeable future. So we have seven or eight, I think it is, different assemblies that are being presented by different people from within our church, all on a theme of hope, which will lead us to October half ten. Please pray for these videos as they go into the classrooms, as the teachers access them, as well as the children, that they will be able to grab a sense of, of what it means to have Christian hope through trusting in Jesus Christ. You know, in these uncertain days that we live in, uh, many are looking for, for hope in, in lots of different places. And as Christians, we believe that hope can be found, pure and, and steadfast, immovable hope can be found in Jesus Christ alone. So please pray for these assemblies as they go into the schools and please also pray for the presenters as they are currently writing assemblies and filming them as well. We've also been asked in Lista Juniors to continue to go in and do the walk through the Bible, which you may be a little bit uh, familiar with through um, our Golden Thread series. So we've been given an opportunity. It starts in three weeks time on the 17th of September, and that will be for five weeks as we teach year six, the story of the Old Testament as it points towards Jesus. After doing year six as classes, we'll then be going to year five and doing them as well. So please pray for just such a wonderful relationship that we have with Lister Juniors and indeed Lister Infants, as well as St. Cecilia's Listers, uh, St. Cecilia's Infants and Juniors as well. And um, please thank God for those relationships and also pray that we're able to support and encourage these schools um, with Christian love. The second I think that I'd love for you to uh, join with us in prayer is um, for St. Hilda's High School. St. Hilda's High School is on Sefton Park and it is a Church of England uh, high school that is now co-ed, which means it's got boys and girls in it as well. There are more than 600 pupils within that school and again, they go back to school this week. And about a month ago or so, I was asked if I would be willing to become the chaplain of that school. So with much prayer and a lot of discussion between myself and our church leaders, we decided that this was the right thing to do and this was a way that we could really honour God within that school. So being the chaplain gives me an amazing opportunity to put Christ first in, in everything that I'm able to do and also to give me more boldness to be able to share the gospel even more openly as well, as well as to support teaching staff, and uh, others, other staff members within the school and indeed provide that pastoral support for the students of the school as well. This coming week I have about uh, six, uh, I think five or six different assemblies to take including the Year 7 Welcome Assembly where we'll be talking about the importance of Christ being the cornerstone of our lives. So please pray for those opportunities and I'll continue to keep you updated on what is happening. But um, now I'm going to hand over to Brian uh, or Pastor Rob or whoever it is. But um, God bless you. Take care. And thank you for all the support that you've been giving us. So 
we will be uh, living in a place called Harborne, which is towards the west side of Birmingham. Uh, we've already got a house there, we've actually had it since uh, last February, um, but due to the lockdown and the Covid, uh, we've not been able to move yet, uh, but we are hoping to move uh, this weekend. So I've got a job in a secondary school, it's an all girls school, and I'll be teaching maths. So I've actually already started my job uh, last February, um, so I do uh, research in the University of Birmingham, um, but due to the lockdown the university has been closed uh, since. Now um, a lot of my job is dependent on uh, my time that I can spend in the lab, uh, so that's been quite challenging over the last few months, uh, but hopefully the university will open soon and I can um, start that again. So we started looking online at some churches and um, we're going to start watching um, their um, morning services and see if we can get involved with anything that's going on through the week through their Zooms um, and then let's just see what happens with um, churches opening. If anything, um, we'd just like to thank the people in Bethel and Bethel Church as a whole. Um, for me personally, I um, started coming to Bethel about six years ago. Um, actually, it's exactly six years ago. Um, and uh, looking back, so much has happened and I owe a lot to the church. Um, the people have been extremely kind and generous to us. Um, so many prayers, so many um, financial support. Um, and if it wasn't for the people in Bethel and Bethel Church, uh, we wouldn't even um, be together and be married. Um, so we'd just like to um, give a big thank you. Um, we'd also uh, like to share a verse with you um, that is our prayer for the church as a whole. So Psalm 90 verse 17. Let the favour of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. we pray let's let's pray father we thank you for the work that you are doing amongst us we thank you for the work that you're doing amongst our children and for all of the the leaders who've been involved in uh, proclaiming your truth to those young in heart well young in young in stature and in heart lord father please continue to bless us with your word and continue to inspire those who are putting videos together and who are going around and seeing young people to encourage them and Lord help us all to look up and know your truth in our hearts and walk according to that truth as we teach it on to others bless the schools as well as they go back and all of our teachers in the congregation who are involved in what will be very different over these next few months in a, in a socially distant environment Bless our own school's work, as Josh has just highlighted, the work that we'll be doing. Lord, would you put your hand upon that, and would you guide us and keep us in that work? And Lord, would your truth, would your truth set people free? Lord, young and old, the teachers who hear and, and the parents who hear and, and the children are like, please, set people free. Let there be sinners repenting, um, and let their angels be singing, we pray. Of Hannah and Jasper, we thank you for them. We pray that your richest blessing upon them as they embark on this next chapter of their lives. Lord, would you keep them? Would the your light of your countenance be upon them? Would they know your blessing and be enriched by your truth and help them in their search for a, a, a new fellowship as well? So go before them, Lord, and richly bless them, we ask. And Father, as we come to your word in a moment, would you speak? This is your word, Lord, written by yourself, written so that we can know you and love you, rejoice in you and follow you. So help us to do that this morning, we ask. 
In Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Well, we're going to go to John's Gospel this morning. And a little bit different this week, we have someone reading the scriptures for us. That's Rachel. So Rachel is going to read from John chapter 5, verses 30 to 47. Today's reading is John 5, verses 30 to 47. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing, bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people. But I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is only one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Thanks, Rachel. It's good to have someone else reading. It makes a change from my uh, my face, doesn't it? Anyway, let's get into the text. So the religious leaders were they were gathered around Jesus, and they couldn't see the truth. It was hidden in plain sight. They couldn't see that this man Jesus, who stood before them, truly was who he claimed to be, the Son of God. The evidence was there to see and hear. Jesus gave testimony in this passage to the facts. He tried to convince them, not on the basis of what he claimed about himself, but on the basis on, of the testimony of others. But they still didn't get it. So in the world that we live in today, there are many who just don't get it. They just won't have it. They don't believe and they don't want to believe. And... You try to convince them with, with the evidence that is out there and, and, is, and, it, and is there and plain to see. But often you feel as if you're banging your head against a brick wall. I don't know whether you've ever come across people like that. I come across people like that all the time. These are the sceptics. These are those who can't see it. And as I said already, many of them don't want to see it. 
Well, together we're going to come afresh to this passage this morning and examine the evidence that Jesus puts before these skeptics. And in doing so, I'm trusting that you, with your faith, will be encouraged and spared on as you are reminded about just how true it all is that Jesus is the Son of God and that he really did come to save us and to take us to be with him. So I'm also trusting that you will share this message with those in your life who still don't see, who still don't believe. And maybe, um, maybe by the power of the Holy Spirit, through this message and through you having a conversation with them, they will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, and no longer will they be sceptical. So please pray about who you can send this message on to. So what is the evidence that we're going to meditate on this morning, uh, that hopefully will encourage our hearts and, and spare us on to share Jesus with others? Well, firstly, we're going to see the evidence of, of John the Baptist, who testified about the Christ. Thirdly, we're going to see the evidence of the miracles that proved that Jesus was who he said he was. Sorry, that was secondly. Thirdly, we're going to see that of God himself who testified about his son. And then fourthly, we're going to see what the scriptures say and how they testify to the Christ, how they point to him. So Jesus in this passage uses these four witnesses, these four types of testimony to build his case. So let's examine them together and be encouraged together. So firstly, the testimony of John the Baptist. In verse 31, we, we see Jesus announcing to the Jews that he, in accordance with Mosaic law, is going to produce a number of witnesses who would confirm that he was in fact the Son of God. John 5, 31, he said this, If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. You see, Jewish law demanded the testimony of two or three witnesses. We see that in the, in the book of Deuteronomy. So Jesus was not going to disappoint these Jewish religious people. He was sticking to the judicial rules. And boy, did he have some wonderful witnesses to testify to the truth that he was the Son of God. Witnesses like John the Baptist, verse 33. You sent to John and he has borne witness to the truth, says Jesus. You see, John the Baptist was well known amongst the Jewish community. His fame had spread far and wide and, and, and people had flocked in their hundreds, if not thousands, to hear what he had to say in, in the desert wilderness. John's message in that wilderness had, had been all about Jesus, the promised Messiah. And we can see from the Gospels, particularly John's Gospels, that John the Baptist had a number of things to tell us about the Christ. Firstly, he announced him to be the long-expected, long-predicted Messiah, the one of whom the prophets wrote. And John quoted Isaiah himself in, in John 1.23. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And Jesus was that coming Lord that he was testifying to. Secondly, John announced him to be the Lamb of God. To his own disciples, he said in verse 29 in John chapter 1, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As He was pointing to Jesus when he was saying this. Jesus, the Lamb, the innocent substitute, will one day stand in our place, he was telling them, and take our sins upon himself and set us free. This was the implication of the Lamb of God. He would set us free, free to rejoice in the love of God and in all the riches that are found in Christ Jesus. Thirdly, John announced um, Jesus to be the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, John 1.33. He is the one who will pour out the river of living water that will satisfy the thirst of men's hearts for life and for truth. Jesus would do that. 
verse 4, John declared Jesus to be the sorry, number 4, not verse 4. Number 4, John declared Jesus to be the son of God. It's John 1:34. He is the word made flesh, Lord of heaven and earth, who have became who have become a man. And here in verse 33, Jesus says as he stands before these skeptics, it's all true. Everything that John testified about me is true. Do you know, many hundreds um, became believers after hearing John preach in the wilderness. He pointed them to Jesus, our, our glorious Saviour, and they had believed. They weren't sceptical, they believed. They believed and their hearts were changed. Was that you this morning? Have you heard that Jesus is? He is the Son of God. Have you heard that he's all these things that John testified to? Have you understood these things? And have you accepted him as your Lord and Saviour? Has Jesus set you free? So Jesus is testifying to the sceptics. In testifying to the sceptics, he said this of, of John in verse 35. In chapter 5. He was a burning and shining lamp and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. Talking about John. John the Baptist's lamp burned for Christ. He was on fire for Christ. Uh, and, and the light of Christ shone through his life. We have that same light. The same light that John had. If you're a Christian here, we have that light. The same light that, that, that led him to proclaim the truth and he burned bright so let's be like John let's be encouraged by John let's be encouraged by this verse where Jesus described that he was a, a lamp that is burning and let's burn bright for Jesus and may our lives as John's did point point towards Jesus so remember to forward this message on and point them to Jesus Christ used John's testimony as it, sends at the, as it says at the end of verse 34 so that you may be saved do you know Christ can use your testimonies as well he can use your life your witness your light light that can shine upon the lives of others and by the work of the Holy Spirit they too may be saved wouldn't you want that for your family and your friends this week I know I do so that was the first witness witness number one so let's look at the second witness or testimony secondly then the testimony of the miracles of Jesus so we're now John 5 verse 36 if you want to follow it Jesus said but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John for the works that the father has given me to accomplish the very works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. Jesus says, look at the works that I do. Look at the miracles. All of this proves that I am who I say I am. It proves that I am sent by my Father. The, these very men who he was trying to convince you know, they had just witnessed an amazing miracle by the pool of Bethsaida. You can read about it at the beginning of chapter 5. There was this fella who for 38 years had, had lay crippled, unable to walk. 38 years of, of I guess, of, of, of frustration. 38 years of pain. 38 years without any hope. And, and known to everyone. And then Jesus comes along. And bent down and he says to him in, in chapter 5 verse 6, do you want to be healed? <laughs> we we'll know what the answer is going to be, don't we? And then in verse 8 he says, after, after he'd spoken to me, he says in verse 8, get up, says Jesus, take up your bed and walk. At once the man was healed. 38 years of anguish, gone. In a second, a miracle that only God could perform. And these men had seen it. 
before their very eyes and yet they still did not believe that he was the son of God. Others had believed it, having seen all of the miracles, but not these proud religious men. All they could do was have a go at him because he'd healed on the Sabbath. They'd seen the works of his almighty hand and they still remained blind. Again, let me challenge you again. What about you this morning? Do you believe in the God of the miraculous? Do you see that Jesus performed many acts of supernatural power that are too numerous for me to list here today because we'd be here till midnight? You know, the sick were healed. People in their thousands saw it. The dead were raised. There are three recorded raisings of the dead that Jesus did in the New Testament. And they're only the ones that are recorded. The blind were given sight. And John, at the end of his gospel, he says this in chapter 21, verse 25. Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. In the New Testament, in the Gospels, we only have a few recorded miracles, but there would have been hundreds, if not thousands more. He did the miraculous. And those miracles testify to us today that he truly is the Son of God. So do you believe the miracles? I'll ask you again. Do you think about them and then and think, wow, only God could do such a thing. And you know, this same God, by his spirit, he still performs miraculous acts today. There are still sick who are healed again by the power of the spirit. There are still supernatural acts that good reformed Christian people can indeed testify to. You see, we do have a God who can move mountains. We have a God who, with one word of his mouth, can create the whole universe. Nothing is impossible with him. We have a God of the miraculous. And we shouldn't limit him. His miracles testify to who he was and who he is. But they didn't believe. Again, I'll ask you the question, do you? So John the Baptist has testified, Christ's miracles have testified, and next, from thirdly, we come to the most important testimony of all, that of the Father in heaven. So thirdly, the testimony of God the Father, verse 37 and verse 38. And the Father, this is Jesus saying, and the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me, his voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You see, there had been the voice of the Father from heaven at Jesus' baptism. Do you remember the story? You can read about it in Mark 1 verse 11, where it says there, And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. But in this passage, in verse 37, this voice of God, in the context of what follows, is the voice of Jesus, who is God. In John 14, verse 24, we read Jesus saying, Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Jesus was the mouthpiece of God, but they didn't hear the Father through him. They couldn't hear him. They couldn't get it. They couldn't see it. The father had come by his son to dwell amongst them, but they didn't believe the one who had been sent. They didn't believe in Jesus. It was staring them in the face, but the truth was lost to them. God himself was testifying to them through his son, but it fell on deaf ears. The father does testify through his son. The Jewish leaders, they, verse 37, never heard his voice, nor saw his form, nor did his word dwell in them. 
for they did not believe the one he sent. Again, I'm going to ask you, do you? I'm asking you, do you believe the one that the Father sent? Do you believe Jesus? If you do, hallelujah, rejoice, because your ears have been unstopped. And, and your eyes behold him in faith and, and your life is now hidden in the Son of God. And now you, by faith, you listen to him as commanded by the Father. You listen to his voice who, whose words set you free to live a life of faith according to his most wonderful grace and mercy. Rejoice because you believe the Father's testimony about his Son. So Christ, he used John the Baptist to testify. He used his works, his miracles. And as we've just seen, he uses his father's testimony. And then finally and fourthly, we'll see the testimony of the scriptures to his glorious sonship. Verse 39 and 40. He said this to them. You search the scriptures. He's talking to the skeptics. You search the religious skeptics. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. It is strange when you think that these men were diligent students of the scripture. Probably far more than you and I. They would spend their whole lives counting key words and, and memorizing great sections of it committing themselves wholly to it because they thought that the knowledge of scripture would give them life the knowledge of scripture would give them life and yet in all of this study their hearts had not been gripped do you know it's no different to today do you know in my studies i, I come across men and women Men and women who've written many things, men and women who are very learned, who are educated, who, who spend their lives scholastically poring over scripture. But they get it so wrong. They miss the point. They just don't see the magnificence of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't see that, that Jesus... Um, it's throughout this whole book from this this book here the bible from from genesis to revelation it's about him it's about his glory it's about his kingdom that they miss the wonderful truth about redemption to them it's just head knowledge to them they'd scored a good few points on mastermind as their chosen subject but their hearts are still cold to its truth they refuse to come and have life in this book we have the secret of true life a life in harmony with the creator in this book we we can lose ourselves in in, in the deeper riches of christ in this book, the Son of God, the Messiah, is revealed to us by his word and by his spirit. And through it, through it, in repentance and faith, we obtain eternal life. Jesus said, these scriptures, they testify about me. The Bible is, is, is a wonderful gift from God. Do you see it as a gift? Is it, do you understand it to be your most precious gift? Uh, and we too, like scholars, should be studying it. But unlike them, the ones who were before Jesus, we should allow it to transform us to be more like Jesus. Because it's about him and his kingdom. So Jesus, he presented the evidence to these skeptics that he truly is the son of God. So he's saying, John the Baptist told you, John the Baptist told you to behold the Lamb of God. He's saying, my miracles, my miracles you saw with your own eyes, the very power of God for you to see. 
and they testify of me. He says to them, my father came to you through me. And his voice is here now. And he says to them, the word of God reveals the truth from beginning to end about me. And even after all this, verse 40, they refuse to come and have life. Don't be like them this morning. If this morning you know in your heart that Jesus is Lord, if you're convicted right now as you're listening to this, then, then don't go away from this place without wherever you are. Don't go away without bowing your knee in faith and praying, Lord, help me, save me, forgive me, and start living your life for Jesus. Real life, true life, eternal life. And Christian, thank God this morning, if you've already come to him, obviously if you're a Christian, you have. Thank God that your heart has been melted. Thank God that Jesus has set you free. Thank God that you have seen it and understood it. And go from this place today testifying to this wonderful gift that you've been given. And pray, pray with believing hearts that those who the Lord will put in your life, who are already in your life maybe, those family members, those friends, those work colleagues, will hear the evidence for themselves and will come to the Saviour, just like you have. The evidence is plain to see. Let's all burn bright with that evidence this week. Let's burn bright by the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that Christ is in us, that Christ is with us as we go into all the nations and proclaim his truth. Amen. Well, I hope to see you again tonight when we uh, gather again as God's people and we'll be gathering around the communion table. But let's finish by praying and then I hope to, as I said, to see you again tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you, you came and you bore witness to the truth a truth that does set us free. So Lord, help us to be mindful of that truth today and in the days ahead. Help us to rejoice in that truth. Help us to throw off the sin that so easily entangles and to run the race with perseverance, knowing that we, O oh Lord, are headed towards you, knowing that we are your witnesses help us to burn brightly don't let us hide our lamp under under a bushel father but let us shine bright for you this week so thank you thank you for your word today and again thank you for all of those in sunday school and and in all of our youth works um, uh, and in all of the works that we're doing in the church you are burning bright for you Lord, fuel their fire with your spirit, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.